If your permadraws are groovy, are you going to die? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to tie this joke in. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx, and welcome to How Not to Highline, where we do education and a hell of a lot of research on all the different activities that can kill you. Today we're going to explore sport climbing and perma draws. Permanent draws. Now, they are like quick draws, but quicker. Quick draws you have to actually take off your harness, clip to the hanger, and clip in your rope. These are actually quick quick draws in the fact that they're already permanently installed. Problem is, they get groovy. And this one has a groove in it. And a whole bunch of others that Sam Warren at Lifetime Warranty sent to us. And what's funny is uh, the carabiner's Lifetime Warranty sent to us didn't seem to hold up very well. These permadraws are from Super Soul Sure Shot, say that 10 times fast, from Horse Thief Canyon in Horseshoe Canyon, Horseshoe Ranch. Canyon and Ranch in Oregon. That's hard to memorize, okay? Anyways, Sam Warren pulled these off and sent them to us and he replaced them with some permadraws that are with cables that are from Climb Tech. So they're actually better than now if you are into climbing 12 Cs and are anywhere near Arkansas. But we are actually very curious about whether or not these grooves reduce the strength of the carabiner. They can create sharp edges, which will abrade your rope or cut your rope. This one is not as groovy as the ones we tested, but we did test quite a few. So let's go over that. So in case you didn't notice, I've got no gear on my walls because I'm moving. I'm actually going to be renting a room from my welder who helped me make the slack snap and bolt buster machine. And on his property, we're going to build a full size drop tower. It's basically as if a kid got to live in the back of Toys R Us. So I'm going to learn how to weld. We're going to have a lot of fun out there. Go to slackline.com, give me your email, and I will update you on all the cool stuff we've got going on. We're going to have a community based design for the drop tower. I could just ramble for on forever. Let's get back to quick draws. Bobby broke test. Uh, all of these. And the first way that he did it was the full package. So he put the whole thing in there with the dog bone, the carabiner, and a rope like you use when you're climbing, where it goes from the climber to the blayer. So that's why he has a figure eight looped to another figure eight. And it broke the dog bone first. And that kind of makes sense. And it broke a little bit below MBS, which also makes sense because it's also, it's been several years in this afternoon sun. And that is why they were replaced with cable dog bones by Sam Warren, because the sun does degrade things over time. Next test Bobby did was put the rope directly onto the carabiner to see if the rope would get cut by these sharp grooves. And it actually broke the carabiner. The first test he did uh, snapped the carabiner before the rope, which makes sense because the rope in that shape uh, breaks above 25 kilonewtons. Straight in line, a figure eight to a figure eight is about 15. And so when he makes it in a U shape, you're going to get a little less than 30. And this carabiner is only rated for 24 kilonewtons. So carabiner broke. But then he did it again. He put the rope on the carabiner directly. It actually cut the rope where it touches the carabiner on that sharp edge that is created by the groove. Now, if you don't know about knots, the rope always breaks, always breaks in the knot. And so it's very interesting that it's breaking on that carabiner. So Bobby put another rope on that carabiner, a fresh one, and it also cut that rope. So it's pretty important to not have groovy quick draws when you're climbing because it could damage your rope. So yeah, knots are, are welded and there's where it failed. Now all these numbers are above 20 kilonewtons, which you're not going to get those numbers. Uh, on a lead whip, I think the most you're going to get is six. But your rope running over this sharp edge is a very different scenario. It's not just in a slow pull test this scenario. Can't wait to have that drop tower, eh? <laughs> I think we all knew that sharp edges on a carabiner is not good for your rope, but how strong is the carabiner? Does it reduce the strength since there's a lot less aluminum where, I don't know, it looks like it needs to be there. And 
it did go up to 27 kilonewtons when the rope was installed. And then the rope broke. Carabiner is still intact, but I'm gonna say that is a different shape than it was before. Look what happened to the rope over here. Um, it essentially stripped the sheath off of the rope. But then Bobby finally broke the carabiner at 19 kilonewtons after he stressed the crap out of it. It's nice to know that the carabiners are basically getting full strength and you're actually stronger when you're groovy. As funny as I think I am, there's actually some truth to grooves making carabiners stronger up to a point. What happens is the groove forces the rope to be more in line with the spine and keeps it as close to the spine as possible. And that is where you get all the strength. That's why certain shapes make almost more of a difference than how thick your aluminum is. So uh, it doesn't reduce the strength of your carabiners to have grooves up to a certain point, at least in the tests we'd had. And our grooves were about 50% cut through on some of them. They all held at least MBS, um, but we pulled on them so many times that some of them broke below MBS. Now the first quick draw had a steel carabiner and that only had an MBS of 26 kilonewtons, which uh, some steel carabiners have a much higher one, but it actually helps with the wear and tear because the first draw is sometimes the one that gets lowered off the most. And so uh, supposedly it will get a groove a lot less soon than an aluminum one. It still had some wear and tear on the carabiner, but it also had rust, not enough rust for it to matter, but rust nonetheless. So Bobby pulled it and it got 32 kilonewtons and broke normal in the back of the spine like it's supposed to. So that was pretty good. Another interesting thought is the dog bones broke on either side pretty much evenly. There was not one side over the other that would break as if rubbing on the wall could have caused some abrasion or some pinching here. Uh, they, they basically broke evenly between all the tests on either side. Another interesting thing was usually aluminum just breaks, at least that's what I've seen, and steel is something that bends more. But I'm oversimplifying that, I know. But you can see here that these two aluminum carabiners are not exactly the same shape. And I did a little plastic surgery here <laughs> so I could see what the shape was looking like. And it's pretty neat how this carabiner breaks and how it breaks very jaggedly. Atomic structure, I'm sure there's some scientific reason for it. Put it in the comments below why the aluminum looks like that. I, uh, I learned a lot, a lot from you guys just reading through comments. Uh, typically doesn't make me sound much smarter when I'm making videos. But you can really see this groove is, God, that looks so bad for a rope. So, uh, yeah, it's science. It's cool. So basically, uh, perma draws with grooves and that are sun bleached nylon are perfectly safe if you don't whip. So just make sure you don't suck and you'll be perfectly fine. It is only a 12C after all. But seriously, the ethics of permanent draws are all over the place. Please leave in the comments below what you think of permanent draws because people say they leave visual impact. Yeah, it'd be nice to walk up and only see pristine rock and shiny bolt hangers everywhere. Or we can just acknowledge the fact that we're using that area for climbing and yeah, you're gonna see some draws.